Hello, um, James Gilmore from Gilmore Space. Uh, our business is fundamentally to design and build low-cost hybrid rockets to support the small satellite uh, industry. Essentially, uh, in layman terms, we're building a bus to support um, satellite manufacturers who were finding it very difficult and hard to get access to space. There are a number of uh, things that excite me about the business. Uh, I don't think I'm lucky, I'm blessed. Uh, I happen to be, uh, you know, to me what I believe is one of the most innovative um, and exciting uh, startups in Australian history, which is, which is great. Uh, looking to pioneer Australia having a domestic launch capability. Uh, the other, I guess, fundamental input to that is, um, you know, looking to inspire uh, the current generation and the next generation, uh, that really excites me. The other big thing, I work with a wonderful bunch of people. Uh, that's our strongest asset. We wouldn't be able to do anything uh, without them and their tireless commitment to, uh, to get the job done. And um, yeah, I think it's a really exciting start, uh, times and uh, we've got a lot to look forward to. One of the biggest uh, things was growing from about 12 to 15 people up to 30 people within the last year. Uh, which, is, which has been great. Um, I guess the other big fundamental input to that capability was the $5 million in Series A investment led by Blackbird, uh, which has been really good and that's given us a lot of confidence and also the community about confidence in terms of uh, you know investing in us and it's really up to us to kind of deliver on that uh, uh, capability. The other, I guess, uh, significant achievement uh, for us was we static test fired what we believe to be the largest single port uh, hybrid motor to be uh, developed, uh, which was really exciting. We did that on the 20th of uh, December. Uh, we achieved about 30 kilonewtons of thrust uh, for about four seconds. Uh, that equates about three tons of, uh, of power. Um, we followed that on and uh, did a longer duration uh, high pressure test uh, that achieved about uh, 70 kilonewtons of thrust for about five, five seconds. Uh, so a decent and stable uh, 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 profile. Another significant achievement and step towards the direction for us. Uh, we were also successful, it took us about 18 months, but we signed a Space Act agreement uh, with, uh, with, with NASA. Uh, that was huge. Um, and that's something that I think has major ramifications both for us and obviously our, our stakeholders and our community uh, abroad. I think it's quite an exciting time uh, for us. In the next uh, four to six months, uh, there's a couple of significant milestones we would like to, to hit. We're developing our capability to launch a sounding rocket to verify a number of uh, components in that technology that we can take to a, a bigger orbital class uh, vehicle. What that really means is starting to actually put payloads or small satellites into, into space. Uh, we're not, we won't have that capability for a number of couple of years, but this uh, sounding rocket test in the uh, next four to six months is gonna be a really good tech demonstrator for that. We're also looking to secure our, our series, series B. We've already started to uh, look at engaging with um, venture capital. So that's still early days and we've still got a bit to go on, uh, on that. Um, but you know, in terms of uh, you know, future potential, we could go any number of ways um, uh, along the lines of another 40 staff uh, within the next uh, three, three years. Um, you know, potential revenues of $40 million. million. A, a bit further along the line is definitely uh, in-space uh, propulsion. Some of the technology we're developing has the potential for in-space propulsion units. So putting a propulsion system onto a, a, a piece of hardware like a satellite, and that could be anything for uh, Moon or Mars resupply missions. Um, you know, space debris is a big uh, kind of topic of conversation. Some of our propulsion units could be put on some existing hardware or whatnot to look at cleaning up some of the, some of the junk. Um, you know, and I think there's no reason within the next eight years we can start looking at, at, uh, at human, human space flight. Uh, no reason why we can't. Uh, the other big thing is astro asteroid mining. Uh, uh, Australia's great at digging things out of the ground. It'd be great if we started looking at a bit more uh, innovative concept like asteroid uh, mining. We would definitely uh, uh, support that. 
And really what I'm quite excited about is uh, a fundamental change in the way Australians think about space and space uh, technologies and there's definitely winds of change and I'm uh, optimistic that in the next uh, six months there'll be some really good strategies that uh, harbour and sustains innovation in Australia and really gives the, the, the youth who are moving through um, looking at areas of science, technology, engineering and maths that really has a, as a, uh, uh, an end goal. I uh, fundamentally think that uh, there are a lot of good inputs into, uh, I guess, innovation in southeast Queensland. We are supported by some of the greatest unis in, in Australia, UQ, QT, Griffith, Bond, uh, a number of those that uh, I personally engage with and look to uh, secure talent and foster talent. So I, I, I really think that there's a couple of little things that can be done now and we're going to see the max benefits in, uh, in years to come.